Hello, this is Bryn Antrim, one of the librarians here at Santa Monica College Library. Today we're going to be doing a database tour of the Modern Language Association, or MLA, handbook database. This is an unusual database in that it is actually the digitized form of a few different books, rather than a database that retrieves articles, which is what you may be more familiar with. In order to access the library from the college homepage, mouse over Student Support and click on Library just after counseling. You can also go there directly by typing in smc.edu slash library. Once you get to the library, you have a variety of options for your research. We have a video on our YouTube channel giving you a website tour of the library homepage if you would like to check it out. But today we're going to go into a specific database. Um, say, for example, you are in an English class and your instructor wants you to use the Modern Language Association format for formatting your paper, writing your citations, and doing in-text citations. That would be one time when you would use this database. Another time is, say, you're in a sociology class, for example, and your instructor wants you to do some evaluation of various types of resources that you find, and you feel a little shaky about that. You'd like a little backup. A third time when you might use this database is if you were in an English 2 class, for example, and you're needing to do scholarly academic research on a literary topic. This database will help in all three of those scenarios. In order to get to it, head into the databases, and this gives you the Santa Monica College Library databases either grouped by topic, by format, or all databases listed alphabetically by title with a short description of what's in each database. I'm going to all databases to find this database because it is useful in a variety of different disciplines. So we scroll down alphabetically past all of these guys and we find MLA Handbook Plus. Now I mentioned earlier that this is not like most of the databases that you're used to and that's because it's um, brand new as a database as of 2022 and they essentially took their book and digitized it and put the book on this database. So if you would just like to take a tour of it and see how this database works you can do that here but I'm going to instead toss us in to the MLA handbook the ninth edition. This opens up a series of PDFs that are the chapters and subchapters within this book. And the way the MLA handbook is broken down is following along the way you would research for an essay or other project. The first begins with formatting it, how do you set up your page, etc. Then, how do you write it? Things like when do you use a dash or a hyphen, how do you use a semicolon, when do you use quotation marks, etc. Then it talks about what most people think of when they hear MLA, which is how do you cite sources. You cite sources in order to give credit to the people whose work you used in your project so that you don't get accused of accidentally plagiarizing. So it talks a bit about plagiarizing. It talks about the list of works cited. In MLA it is works cited, in APA it is references. Both are citations that give credit to the people whose work you used. And then it goes into the various containers within citations. So, for example, a database is a container for journal articles. A journal is a container for those articles. An article isn't a container, it's just an article. So think of it like nesting dolls. There's a little doll inside a medium doll inside a large doll. The large doll is the database, the medium doll is the journal, the little doll is the article. And you have to cite each of those dolls in order to make sure that whoever reads your work will be able to follow your tracks and find the work that you used when you were formulating your ideas and coming to your conclusions. Then it talks about citing sources within the text. So you use a quotation on page three of your five page essay and you need to make sure that you have a parenthetical, which is a, an in-text citation in parentheses, that connects that quotation to your work cited. It talks about notes and 
it gives what I think is one of the most useful parts of it, which is a sample works cited list based on the format of the resource that you are using. So an example of an MLA 9th citation for books with various types of authors by organizations, edited or translated by various people with illustrations, etc. So this is one place to go. If you're a little unsure where you need to start, here's a list of examples by format. And that is found in Appendix 2 of the MLA Handbook in this MLA Handbook Plus database. Now this is not the only thing in this database that's very useful. If you click under All Books, it gives you other books to look at. One is the MLA Guide to Undergraduate Literature Research. So if you're in English 2 and you need to figure out how you're going to find primary sources about William Conrad's book and what that means, you can go to the chapter using contextual primary resources and it will explain it to you. What is a primary source? How do you find them? Periodicals or anything published periodically like magazines or journals or newspapers. Um, how do you use them when you're doing literary research? It might be a little different than if you're doing science research or you're doing history research. And it gives examples of these as well. Keep in mind these are only examples. If you need help, you can always go to the library homepage and ask a librarian. We are available anytime that the library is open and this Ask a Librarian function is available 24-7, 365. If an SMC librarian is not available, a librarian from another college or university in the consortium of which we're a part will be happy to help you. The third time that you would find this database useful, the third book, is the MLA Guide to Digital Literacy. One of the primary difficulties that people have doing research or even discovering what is false and what is true in the news, for example, is trying to evaluate information. And that is digital literacy. So this is an outstanding book if you are more interested in the topic and you would like to find out how online research differs than resources um, that are in a database that have already been in a way evaluated and archived to some extent for you. Talking about source credibility, what you can trust and what you can't. Reading laterally, which is the way that professional fact checkers determine if something is true or false is not by reading the source itself right off the bat, but by reading things around the source. So finding out about the author, finding out what other people are talking about on this topic. Um, and it is uh, going outside of the source to determine the worth of that source and not just relying on what you know or maybe don't know about a particular topic when you're reading research on it. So I highly recommend the MLA Guide to Digital Literacy. Finally, heading back into the handbook, this handbook is traditionally a little difficult for people to use. Um, and they don't intend it to be, it just is, because there's an awful lot of information and an awful lot, awful lot of detail. So what I recommend in addition to this MLA handbook is on the library homepage, we have research guides. And one of the research guides that we have <laughs> my apologies. This has been revised, so I'm going to look for MLA. <clears throat> Here we go. One of the research guides that we have is citation styles. And MLA citation is linked with some additional researchers resources, videos to help you both with MLI citation in general and specifically formatting your page, and a link to chat with a librarian if you get stuck, as well as a link back to MLA Handbook Plus. So I would recommend if you are working in a class that uses MLA, you use both the MLA Handbook 
and the research guide to MLA. So that is on the library homepage. Student support, library, research guides, search for MLA, and then click on citation styles. This also works if you're looking for APA information. We have one for each. Okay. If you have any questions, please let us know. And good luck with your research. Be well.